Luke chapter 1, verses 57. Nine months of struggle. Well, it's been just over nine months since the first lockdown began. And now we are unexpectedly in the middle of another one. One which has caused so many plans to be changed for the Christmas period. And people are understandably shocked and upset. And there are times when the whole situation gets to us all. I know I've had my moments over the last nine months. But I'd like to point us to a verse from Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. And this is the call to every Christian in every age and in every circumstance. And though it was written later, this is what we see Zechariah and Elizabeth doing in today's reading. So let's look at today's passage under those three headings, joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. So be joyful in hope. Now Elizabeth and Zechariah were devout followers of God. He was a priest and she looked after the home. But there had been great sadness in their lives because they couldn't have children. We can only imagine the grief and the pain that they went through over the years of their marriage until Elizabeth became too old to have children. Yet they didn't give up on God. They didn't assume their sadness was because God wasn't there or because God didn't care about them. They carried on trusting God and serving him. We're told in chapter 1 verse 6, both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But then, nine months or so before the events of today's reading, something unexpected happened. Let me read it to you from Luke chapter 1 verse 8. Once, when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as a priest before God, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshippers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Don't be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you. And many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, How can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well on in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. And I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. Meanwhile, 
The people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realised he had seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home. Well, what a shock. I bet Zechariah did not expect that to happen when he went to work that day. After all those years of waiting, they were finally going to have a son. And Elizabeth was careful. She stayed at home. We know that message, don't we? Stay at home. Well, she stayed at home for five months, praising God as she reflected on all that God was doing for her. And then the day came. And she gave birth to a son, just as Gabriel had said. Now the birth of a child is almost always a time of great joy and hope. Because there's another new life entered into the world. And it's a joy that's infectious. So many people have said how the birth of my new grandson <coughs> has cheered them up in the middle of this crisis. And that little life and the other little lives that have been born this year are a sign that the world isn't all bad. There is joy, there is life to be had. And for Elizabeth, the joy overflowed to her family and her neighbours. Verse 58, her neighbours and relatives heard that the Lord had showed her great mercy and they shared their joy. So they were joyful in hope. And that's something that we can all do, even in these worrying times. Christmas isn't cancelled. Jesus still came to earth. He still died for us. He still rose again. He still gives us the Holy Spirit to be with us. I wonder if we can spread that joy this Christmas. It's so easy to get caught up in the gloom in the criticisms, in the complaints. And we forget that we still have the most joyful story to tell. Christmas is very much happening because Jesus, our Saviour, has already been born. So we can be joyful in hope. We're also called to be patient in affliction. Now, Zechariah has not been able to speak for nine months. And you'll remember that even though he was a devout man, he didn't trust that God could give his wife a baby, let alone a baby in the spirit and power of Elijah. So God had taken away his speech. And it had to have been a tough nine months. He was a priest. Being a priest involves speaking. Can you imagine the strain of not being able to do his job? Not being able to speak to his wife? Having to write everything down on a writing tablet every time he wanted to get his message across? It had to have been incredibly laborious and frustrating. And we too have been struggling for nine months or so. We've been living on and off under restrictions. We haven't seen our loved ones. Some of us have even missed key events, like the funeral of a loved one, or a cuddle with a new grandchild. Others have had COVID and have been really ill, struggling with fatigue long after the disease has passed. It has been tough, and the latest tightening of restrictions at the very last minute has seemed a cruel blow. How do we deal with it? How did Zechariah? Well, he was patient in affliction. He didn't give up. He didn't stop being faithful. Once the child was born and they asked about his name, he wrote clearly, his name is John. He was calm. 
he was faithful, he was patient. And he could be those things because actually underneath he did trust God. He might not have initially, that news was a shock to him, he was old, his wife was past childbearing, all a bit much to take in. But fundamentally, he did trust God. And as he saw Elizabeth's pregnancy develop, no doubt his faith grew as he saw God keeping his promise. And that's the key for us all as we face disappointment, anxiety, illness, disability. If we know God is in that trouble that we face, then we can entrust it to him. Won't necessarily make that trouble go away, but it will change how we respond to it, how we feel about it. And for Zechariah, of course, the affliction ended the moment he gave the child the name. Immediately, he could speak again. And what did he do with that power of speech? Straight away, he praised God. And that's our third point. Be faithful in prayer. So Zechariah praised God because talking to God was something natural to him. It came from that personal relationship that he had with him. It was his first instinct. And I bet those prayers of praise weren't the first prayers that Zechariah said, even though they were the only ones he could say aloud for nine months. I bet he prayed for Elizabeth's safety as she gave birth. Imagine what a strain on an older body giving birth was. I bet he prayed that his child would be able to do the job that God had given him. I bet he poured out to God his sorrow and his repentance at not trusting him when he gave him the message in the first place. And that is our privilege as Christians, to talk to God. Do you keep talking to God through your trying times? Do you keep talking to God through your good times? Because lifting our hearts and our voices to God lifts us away from our own troubles. And it reminds us that we're not on our own in this. We might not be able to be with our family and our friends. But we're not on our own, because God is with us. We have the maker of the universe with us to help us. And this faithful response to the events had a real impact. Verse 65. All the neighbours were filled with awe, and throughout the hill country of Judea, people were talking about all these things. Everyone who heard this wondered about it, asking, what then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand was with him. As we respond faithfully to the troubles that we face, and to the good news that comes our way too, then others will notice. They'll ask questions about how we can react in such a way. It opens the doors to the message of good news. So, a great account of a miracle baby who was coming to herald the even greater miracle baby, our Lord Jesus. But also a lesson in how to deal with unexpected messages, affliction, even joy. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. And if you struggle to do those things, because they don't always come easy, then ask God to help. His spirit helps us to speak when we haven't even got the words to say. And God will use these times to change our lives and the lives of others for the better. Well, the words of prayer. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you that you helped Zechariah and Elizabeth to be joyful in hope, to be patient in affliction, and to be faithful in prayer. 
that will help us too to be all of those things, especially at times when we're feeling fed up and weighed down, the times when we worry whether life will ever be recognisable again. Help us to keep on holding onto you as you hold even more tightly onto us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.